Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Unbreakable Board Games. Today I'm here with Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. He's going to be guesting with us. Say hi. Hello. And we're going to be talking about another portion, episode three, which is going to be about... Theme. That's right, we're going to talk about themes. Popular themes, unpopular themes, themes we like, themes that we're looking forward to, themes that we've previously really enjoyed, and that's why we pick up the game, and whether that theme itself can carry a game. There's also this like ladder, right? You're going to have like artwork, you're going to have theme, you're going to have mechanics. What, what else? What are some other ones? Oh, writing. Just like, just the basic writing, either the, you know, part of the rule book, or even just the flavor text of something can hide in the theme. Yeah, and that can also determine whether or not you want to pick up a game. So we have a list of things to talk about, and we'll just go in order here. We got popular themes, unpopular themes we like, themes we don't, unique themes, games we are looking forward to that have a theme, or games that we currently own that have a really nice theme. And then uh, I have a little list of specific things that maybe you want to check out just due to the theme, all right? Mm -hmm. Popular themes. What? When, when you see, you know, popular themes, everyone's going to say, Zombies, right? Right, yeah. So zombies is a popular theme. People really like that theme. Uh, another theme I would say is very popular is just fantasy in general, mm -hmm. like orcs, goblins, dwarves, wizards, that kind of stuff. Wizards, wizards, wizards which is a very subgenre of that. Knights and kings and queens. Mm -hmm. Anything that involves that fantasy D and D setting is very popular. Another theme. one is sci-fi. Sci-fi is a big theme right now. Yeah. Specifically, and that, that branches ship. off, like you know, with you know, planetary wars and. Oh, and some sort of like science fiction I technology. think of literally Twilight Imperium when I think of sci-fi themed yeah. games because that's like one of the big granddaddies of sci-fi mm -hmm. and there's a lot of games based off of that type of theme where you're a specific race or colony or something like that and you're attempting to control the galaxy. A lot of 4X games basically are that style like there's not a whole lot of 4x games that aren't really sci-fi is there mm -hmm. i mean there's civilization and stuff like that but yeah. but even still those are knights and all that kind of stuff i'd be interested to see some 4x games can you think of any 4x games that have theme that is uh not related to the basic classic genres no i can no i can't i know no, no, not, not on top of my head but i can probably just research it we're some so. we're some 4x music themed games oh no <laughs> No, I don't, I don't think I got one for that either. Uh, so, but what other popular themes are that we can cover the main three or so, but there are some other ones I would say about like king, uh, building, kingdom building type games in yep. which you're trying to build a castle, you're trying uh, to build a city. Another you're... one is trading in the Mediterranean. Yep. Yep. That's trading, trading spices and goods yep. and all that kind of stuff. You can think of tons of games with those specific themes. Now, does a popular theme mean it's a good theme? And I mean, what, what is a good theme, technically? Like, some people say, oh, zombies. I don't want any more zombies, but they're so dang popular that people keep putting them out. So, is that necessarily a good or a bad thing? No, I mean, the theme is just theme. I mean, people are going to like it just because, you know, just the subject matter. Yep. But also, it's the implementation of the game. For me, it's more important of the implementation. Sometimes sometimes it can be there, and I, re I would really like it. And sometimes it doesn't have to be there for me to like it, because it's going to be, sometimes going to be based on the mechanic. Yeah. And I yeah. think, honestly, with theme itself, it's going to come down to whether people are buying the game or not. I think that's the most important when it comes to pretty much any game for any reason. If people are buying it, obviously that theme is still relevant, or the game can hold its own weight even with that specific theme that may bother it down right and it will su suffice as a good game i mean that's kind of the idea for a lot of these things zombicide for instance is a game that i'm not such a big fan of and i don't like i i, I got kind of bored of those type of games a while ago mm -hmm. but it is a very widely popular game they've made many many reprints of it and it's still basically zombies regardless how you look at it you're moving around a board and you're fighting them right so yeah but it, it sells so obviously it is it must be good or at least good for those specific people and enough of a majority of people like it and, so. and, and, the, and the other one i mean it is, it is a zombie game is too is dead of winter but it has a very total different perspective because yep. it's for uh, you know it's it like is, a survival game it is it's not just survival but it's it's about the, the people yep instead of the zombies it kind of feels like the walking yeah, dead a little bit yeah zombies like is more the you know zombies just an obstacle while you know the people are there trying to survive and have their own kind of objectives in that yeah you're worrying about the things around you and zombies is kind of like a secondary thing that actually can mm -hmm. occur in the game which is kind of nice because it's kind of like sprinkled in it's not necessarily about zombies it's called dead of winter because you're dealing with the dead of winter it's cold there's a bunch of problems whether it be food so shortages whether you're worrying about a traitor in your mix and then of course there are zombies knocking at your door which is an additional portion so it's kind of nice mm -hmm. how you can sprinkle in something that everybody likes but keeping the game unique and different in, in a sense right mm -hmm. what about unpopular themes popular themes you see all the time that nobody wants to pick up 
Um, I think <laughs> some of the maybe uh, I was thinking maybe school subject themes. Yeah, a lot of like, a, like a math, lot of like, like math, math stuff. Math. Unfortunately, a lot of there's, a lot of there's also games. a rising in science games. I don't think we have enough science games. There's science fiction. There's a lot of science fiction games, but there's not enough science games. Yeah, that's true. Oh. I mean, actually, luckily for us, Genius Games is gonna be sending us some stuff to mm -hmm. to, to, to look at <laughs> about biology and all that. I game. There's a game called Cytosis well, and whatnot they got coming out. And while there's uh, another popular theme is cats, an unpopular theme I think is dogs. Yeah, or just not. I don't think. There's, enough there's dog not a games. lot of dog games. Yeah. I think there's the dog, a dog's life, and, and I then think there's dogs. The game. Yeah, and I know there's a lot more dog loving people than cat people, but I think cats is more of an internet from it's, it's an internet thing. Internet loves cats. So you have the yeah. popular, which is cats, and the unpopular, which is dogs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not unpopular. It's just it's and we just haven't seen it. I mean, dogs are popular. More yeah, I mean, in dogs. general, people just like I have a dog. Yeah. I don't have a cat. Yeah. So I have two I dogs. Yeah. Cameron, Cameron, you have a dog. He's got cats. Okay. He's got a lot see, of cats. See, two He's out a crazy three, cat. Two man. out of three, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, but uh, I, I, I just don't understand sometimes why certain things do not hit and why others do hit. I mean, I guess it has a lot to do with the internet and the culture and the society of this, like this, this way of like if it works, keep doing it. So that's why you have so many games with cats. And uh, then they have these themes. I think a lot of theme games are that are less popular nowadays are judging style game themes, where it's like, uh, what would you do in this situation? How would you so solve this problem? What gadget or gadget would you make? And somebody's going to pick that up, which is kind of a mechanic, right? But there's a theme involved in there, which is always like, in this thing that you're doing, which is usually involving like, oh, how do you solve this problem? Uh, what are you, you going to do in order to, to stop it? You know what I mean? A lot of these reprinted style type games are, are not as popular as maybe somebody would assume based on certain popular games like Apples to Apples and Cards Against Humanity, where you have a, a, a problem and you have a solution that you need to solve with mm -hmm. it. Would that be a theme, really? No, I, I can't see it as a theme, though. More of a mechanic? Yeah, it's more of a mechanic or... What would be the I theme mean, in the game, then? It would be the, the actions is, and usually, solving. Usually party games, for me at least, has like, you know, it's, it's you know a subject or its own theme in itself. Like, like one is like just, just geeks and one is it's trivia, but it's like guessing numbers and yeah. something like that. So, you know, it's more of a subject or a classification, classification of a uh, the mechanic, whatever the mechanic is. Gotcha. Yeah. Unpopular themes. Yeah. Interesting. What unpopular themes do you guys have, think that are out there? You know, there's mm -hmm. there's quite a few that I can't think of off the top of my head, but there's a lot of popular ones that come to mind real quick. Uh, what themes do we like? Well, I like I like there a lot goes. of fa I like a lot of fantasy stuff. Yeah, that's really good. Um, one and another one is uh, steampunk. I don't I don't think there's a lot of good steampunk games for now, right now. But uh, I'm sure they can pop up. But a subgenre of steampunk I really like is airships. <laughs> Yep, airships. I, I, I like a lot of JRPG, so... JRPG, you know, yeah. JRPG yeah. There's Dawn Trade yeah. coming out, which is going to be cool, I mm -hmm. think. It's a JRPG. Yeah, JRPG game. is also a thing. I, I think there's a like, couple of them on Kickstarter right now that yep. has that, you know, kind of that feeling of you're, you're in a, either a JRPG world. There's a theme behind us that we both like, too. Mm-hmm. Which one's that one? Is it, yeah, this one, right? That's right, Millennium Blades. Millennium Blades is a CCG simulator card game. That has an amazing theme. Cause yeah. It's not only a theme of, like... Of like the trading cards themselves yeah. and how you're having them fight against each other and all that kind of thing, but the theme itself is you are purchasing and playing with trading cards and mm -hmm. you're buying the packs and you're doing all that. So it simulates you going to your local uh, LCG, at lo lo no, local no local friendly friend LF LFG yeah S FLG uh, FLG I don't know game friendly store. local game store yeah and when you go ahead and you go there you pick up your magic card packs or Yu Gi Oh Pokemon or whatever then you're going to take the cards out you're going to organize your deck and they're going to play against people that has all of that attached to it it's a very interesting unique theme and I like how the fact that it has multiple themes kind of added to it yeah there's there's just like it's themes in themes too yep. so it's a theme that's also and then each theme of the different there. packs have a specific yeah. theme as to I, I like I like saying this is Yu Gi Oh the board game. Yeah, it is. It's a board game, but it's like there's a lot of cards in it. Even though it's about a card game, but it's a board game as well because yeah. you know it has boards too. So, <laughs> a lot of the level nine games have a really good theme. Yeah. I would say mm -hmm. I really enjoy. We we were talking about Argent the Consortium yeah. recently, yeah. which has got a cool theme as well. Yeah, the, a lot of things they do is they really embellish not the, to put it in a lot of theme in the game, but also support that they would really supportive mechanisms in there like how this is structured because you are playing it looks like a card game that you would see like a trading card game but also the structure itself and even part of the game is actually playing the game itself yep. the actual fictional game in it right Arjun is a worker placement right but it also has a lot of the the theme the unique of fantasy elements that aren't even yeah. seen a worker magic placement. school magic school actually is not a very popular theme as well, I mean, it's emerging right now. Harry Potter's like coming up with stuff, you know. <laughs> there, yeah, it's, yeah, it's slowly coming out. Um, what about 
Mythic Games. That's one of my one of my favorite uh, companies right now as far as their themes are going. Mm-hmm. They've got Super Fantasy Brawl, which is like a fantasy uh, tactics style RPG kind of game. And then they have Joan of Arc, which is a really interesting theme. I mean, yeah, that's they, something... they, they had a fantasy twist on that one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, with dragons and stuff like that. Oh, I saw, super did you cool. you see the dragon meme? Yeah, it's that's, beautiful. Uh, that's really, I, it's I'm huge. I'm dying to see that game. My, well, really, actually, my wife has been dying to see that yeah. game. She loves the theme of that game. It's cool because it's got a female protagonist in it, mm-hmm. and it has some beautiful miniatures. It's got beautiful artwork. Uh, Solomon Kane, which is the game I am all in for. Uh, I mean, like, all in. That's how much I was interested in Solomon mm-hmm. Kane. I love the theme of Solomon Kane. I love the stories. I love how they're adding so much of that theme into the game itself. It, like, bleeds theme. Uh, and then, of course, they have Mythic Battles Pantheon, which is a beautiful Roman and Greek gods and goddesses and monsters all in this, uh, I think it's a tactical style game. I haven't actually played it, but I've looked at it and watched it played. I've seen all the miniatures out at my local con, Strategic Con, and it looks gorgeous. So I like I like what they're doing with stuff. Yeah. Speaking speaking of uh, Solomon Cain, but IPs. Yeah. IPs, yeah. They're... IPs are really cool themes, I think, for yeah. a lot of them. I think, I think the, as we as the gaming is becoming more popular and more getting a lot more advancements, right? Uh, a lot of IPs are being supported very good, very well now. Yeah. As in with good mechanics instead of something like, oh, it's a roll and move. Oh, it's a roll and move. Speaking of IPs, <laughs> Lucky Duck Games. Mm-hmm. They've been doing a lot of mobile game IPs and putting them into board games. They've got Jetpack Joyride. They've got Fruit Ninja. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the Castle Rush. And then they have their an, 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 an interesting uh, title. Separate from those, they have something called Chronicles of Crime, which is loaded with theme. That's like theme the game. Yes. Because you're literally just playing CSI or Law and Order the board game, and you're moving around using your app and all that kind of stuff. A uh, jetpack joyride, you really feel like you're moving, fr- just like the app, you're moving through walls, you're dodging things, you're trying to collect coins. It's a dexterity game. Fruit Ninja, you feel like you're chopping the fruits. Mm-hmm. Really embedded theme with those games, and very, very unique too, which is my type of favorite themes. I like unique style things that I'm not going to see again. Like I, You're not going to see Joan of Arc hit out again. You're not going to see Solomon Kane. You're not going to see jetpack joyride or Fruit Ninja. These things are once they're made, nobody else is really going to copy them, which is very interesting to me. I feel like I have that specific one that nobody else has. You want to play a game? Let's play Jetpack Joyride. Let me show <laughs> you what this is like. There's nothing else you've ever seen like it. Super, super cool. Uh, so I like that kind of stuff. Lucky Duck does, does a lot of cool stuff, and Mythic Games does a lot of cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I enjoy those specific themes. Uh, as far as like, you're, you really like music as a theme, right? Yes, well, I am a composer yeah. as well. I graduated as a you know in composition studies but the thing is it's there's not a lot of music games out there not a lot of ones that yeah. are getting not very good either. <laughs> not even good there's there's not like, yeah. usually they're like they're either right there for us or sometimes for you specifically because you have like such a yeah a passion for it they like don't meet expectations yeah. and then there's really two schools i mean you got the classical and you got the popular stuff like rock and, and you know all, all you know even jazz is yep. there uh yeah but most of them most of them are if it's going to be about rock or, you know, that kind of genre. It's going to be about rock management. I think one that I kind of enjoyed was, uh, I, I enjoyed it, was called Record. That was a cool little one. Yeah. It felt like a little that, like that, a little that is really cool because they really embellished playing a, an actual chord and a guitar. You play, yeah, you feel like you're playing yeah. a guitar. It, yeah, it is, a, you know, it, it is It is matching, like, as much as, the, like, the science of genius games. Yep. Yeah, this is, it, they really put into into that. Marshall Britt, I yeah. believe it was, who made the game. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, I, I really, like, yeah, I really like that one, yeah. The other one that I actually really liked is uh, Symphony Number no. Nine. Yep. And that it's one, beautiful. yeah, it's a it's a really good it's a really good looking game. It's it is it plays more like a market kind of stock market kind of game, but it does certainly kind of like feel and then that's for at least for me it does feel that in that style of you know you're you're one of the patrons of music you're supporting these composers even though they didn't live at the same time yeah. like you know you know it's something like uh but it's like music and I I get to see faces that I've been seeing all the time in my life. Um, you know, because, you know, in being involved with music, it's kind of cool to see it in this kind of manner and uh, in a game that is actually well done very well. Yeah. I mean, classical games, too, like, that have a more modern twist to a board game like Shakespeare. That was a really cool looking game. I really like the idea of the theme of that, where you're mm-hmm. actually Shakespeare and you're making plays. Or you're technically not Shakespeare. You are one of his... Uh, somebody's trying to help along with trying to create the play. You played that before? I, I see. Like worker placement. Seen you're it, trying yes. to basically. I, my buddy bought that game because he's a big fan of Shakespeare, and uh, it was really gorgeous looking. Love the theme of the game. The game itself is fine, but just the theme was really interesting, really unique. And so, as you can see, I gravitate to those type of things as well. But I think that's basically our popular themes that we specifically like ourselves. Yeah. What, what ones do you not re- like? You do not like at all? 
<laughs> naughty themes. <laughs> naughty themes, like, yeah. like over, over the, it's... over, like, like, what do you mean naughty? Do you mean naughty like the game Rage, uh, from, like, Simon, or do you mean naughty as in, like, uh... No, Rage uh, is, like, like, hyper, violence it's, like, and... hyper violence. Yeah. Which, is, which I don't also care for, but it's something I don't dislike. Maybe, like, maybe like party it. games that involve yeah, naughty yeah. and woo woos and all that. Yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. that kind of yeah. Where you're like, those are hard. You've to got a to small this and you got this, and it's just like people yeah. are like, eh, it's not for us. It, drinking games probably something yeah. that's not as. I, I don't, I don't dislike them. I just don't care for those. Right. Either. I mean, it's like oh, drinking. Like oh, you messed up this little trick you were supposed to do. Now go ahead and have a shot. It's funny because like I specifically when I'm with a gaming group, I don't want to play a drinking game or a party game or whatever. But there are specific instances where it's like that's the only type of game that I'd ever be able to get to a table. And usually my buddies have these party nights. And it's like oh here's like we're gonna play a game tonight called well, One Drunk Night. It's it's a party style game that I actually played this game uh, during one uh, evening of uh, of uh, what do you want to call it? I don't know uh, spirits and. Uh, fun i suppose <laughs> and uh th people had a really really good time with it yeah. so i mean there are just specific instances where i'm like okay this is actually an okay type of theme this people are going to really gravitate toward just like cards against humanity and that kind of stuff but personally would i sit down and like specifically go out of my way to play a game like that without spirits involved and stuff man probably not especially naughty themes too it's like uh, mm. there yeah. are certain ones where i'm like actually this one works you know if it really works it works but for the most part they're just kind of like Blase, mm -hmm. whatever you know, and they're mostly party games or very simple games too. Yeah, so I kind of like I am past that level of that, and they don't really go to you know the that area of the modern board gaming. So, do you have any board games that are coming out that you are interested in the theme? Like, uh, I talked about Solomon Kane, that's one that I'm very much so looking forward Windward. to. Windward, Windward, yeah, airship game. It has airships. I just, I, I, just adore, I just adore airships. I just know why, but you I'll, know, I, I'll, I'll pass it to you after I'm done with it. Yeah, so I, just, it I just, you know, I the, the thing of it's funny because I like ships, you know, but air like airships and you know, kind of almost like nautical themes kind of stuff is just really hits me. Yeah. yeah. How about um, I'm looking forward to Dwellings of Elder Vale as well. Mm -hmm. Beautiful game, beautiful looking idea. Uh, you're you're creating these like you're trying to create dwellings in this crazy landscape with monsters and other people that are trying to do you wrong and it just really fits in the fantasy theme which is very interesting because this type of fan fantasy I can get behind because you're not playing with or orcs and ogres and all that kind of stuff which is fine right? I play tons of games like that but this one's got ratlings and it's got valkyries and then it's got you got you have dwarves and a few few other of those different things but there is so many different variety of different characters you can play as you can play as these like lava golems and stuff and then you've got like nine or ten or twelve different monsters Monsters that appear on the board, they're going to devastate you in unique ways and destroy the landscape. And it, it, it's just really, really interesting. It's got the dragons and it's got wizards and it, it's mm -hmm. got uh, warriors and whatnot. So I was like, this actually works for me as far as the fantasy and theme, theme goes. It's one of the popular ones I think people are going to dig. And it's so unique in its the style of how it, it's, its take on fantasy that it was really interesting to me. So that's another one I've been really pushing. It's why I also haven't reviewed it because I've been like close to the project. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I can just tell people I enjoyed the game, but really it's up to you. I've been I've been doing live streams for it and all that kind of stuff. Have you seen it? What do you think? Yeah, I, yeah. I only saw like the box. Yep. Yeah. So, but it looks really cool. Kind Artwork of like, is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Monsters and stuff. Big monsters. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, at dungeon drop is an interesting one as well. You're literally playing a dungeon in a box. You drop it all on the floor, and then you just actually connect the cubes <laughs> to make dungeons. And it's just cubes in a box. But the theme of it's really interesting. It's a very simple theme as far as there's goblins and dragons and whatnot. Like you feel like you're playing descent, but it's actually just with cubes. That's all it is. Yeah. And you just draw lines around, and you pick up the cubes based on your, the lines you draw in a square, a triangle. And you try to gather as many points as you possibly can. Really interesting game. Uh, Cold Water Crown is an older game, but I like fishing, and I don't think they do enough. Uh, there's not enough fishing games as far as uh, games I enjoy that are also in that theme because I really dig fishing. I uh, just kind of like how you like music. There's maybe like two or three fishing games that I've actually really enjoyed, uh, and I want to see more. I'd like to see some some of them where you actually can go out and like catch the fish and like bring them back and trade them and gather new supplies and go out. And it's like a tournament style, but they haven't made anything really like that. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of puzzly style games. I like underwater games, underwater terror games like the Refuge, uh, Terror from the Deep. Uh, I want to play the game Deep Madness, but I haven't had a chance to try that one how out about, yet. How about Abyss? Abyss, I would like to try as well. That's I a good one that too. Either. I like those underwater horror. I like the movies of Leviathan and like Deep Rising and stuff. So 
I, I wanted to see more theme, uh, the, the, that, that theme come out more. And I have seen it, but I haven't had a chance to play a lot of them. So I don't know. Do you, you guys actually played any of the underwater themes? And if so, let me know what you thought about them in the comments so I can pick them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think my last two are I want to talk about a little bit is Iseon, which is from the guys who did Mysthea. Really, really cool looking game. Mm -hmm. And that one is, I'm not even going to try and explain Iseon. But you should look it up. I'll put a link in the I description. I think I had, this is like the only one I... You saw it at, at uh, we went to tabletop, uh, the tabletop day. And that was the one that was on, I, I had it out. We, oh, yeah. yes, that did very well. And it looks really yeah. cool. You know, I really like the idea of it. But it's got a really crazy, bizarre theme. And uh, I think I should take a look at it. Because I like it. It's very, uh, it's very abstract in mm -hmm. style. And then Vindication. Vindication reminds me of Path of Exile, the board, ga the board game, basically. In which you start off on the beach and you're trying to basically become vindicated. You are a... Uh, a refuge kind of guy who's just like down in his luck, he's not doing well, and he's trying to rectify his past and be create this whole new future for himself. Very unique, very cool. There's a couple of shout outs to games that I found very interesting, unique styles that are nuts. Some of them are newer, some of them are a little older, but yeah. Yeah. I think once for me, uh, I like stop marking, stop marking games. Uh, that would be the yeah. exact opposite for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, stockpile is a great one. Insider trading, which okay. is a very interesting take in, uh, on that, because you get a little information about how the stocks are going to go through. Uh, speculation is really more of a. It's a. It's a, and that's a very easy one. You see the market go up and down. You just, like when to buy and how to buy, and that sort of thing. An IP that's going to come up very soon uh, from one of my favorite companies is a uh, Chocobo. Board game. That's the Chocobo come. board game. Yeah, Chocobo yes, board yes, game. Yes, yes, yeah. please. I have. They had done. A, they, they made a lot of Final Fantasy ones, and they're all. Pfft. No, Sorry. well, the well, the only one they have done is uh, the Chocobo. I have th those. There's two of them, right? That are like maybe there's one a mini pack or something. I don't know. Was, yeah, there's a mini pack. <laughs> it's old main, but you know, I I adore the art. Yeah. And, and I, I like it that way. And, and something I can play with, uh, you know, my friends who are just aren't gamers but are just Final Fantasy fans. Yep. So that's that's a that's a good one. Um, another one. Uh, I, I said I like fantasy genres, right? Yep. Yeah. So oh, actually, a uh, crafting genre, the crafting genre. Okay. Yeah. So um, crafting King's Guild is a fantasy one. Yeah. That's a yeah. good one. That was actually uh, play tested and made here too. Mm -hmm. No, I, no, I I tested it way when it was still alpha. Yeah. Um, Very good game. Uh, yeah. Um, um, what was that? The, the wine making game. Not Venus, the other one. Oh, uh, Venus. Tus so Tuscany. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. That's what. Yeah, I, I really like how that one. Is like you really feel like a winemaker in that one because you're getting, you're going to the grapes. So unique too. Yeah, you go to the grapes. You're aging your wine. You're pressing the wine. You're aging the wine, and then you're gonna sell it off for money, that way. So that's also a really nice one. I really like. Beautiful. Yeah. So that gives you a whole whole bunch of what we think about theme and what we think are popular and unpopular. We could be completely wrong, uh, except for what we feel, right? Like yeah. we can't be wrong for what we feel, but. <laughs> As far as popular themes go or unpopular, yeah. I guess. Let us know if, if we did get it wrong. Wait, what's your take on it? Do you think there are more popular themes that we didn't mention or unpopular themes that you would like to see uh, more of? And uh, um, just what you think in general about the themes of board games. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is our third episode in our Patreon series for Unbreakable Games. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ferdinand, for showing up and giving us your opinion on some of these great themes and great games. Yeah. And uh, the other two behind here, Circular Reasoning is an, it's like a, a last comment I want to talk about was, it is a abstract game. Does abstract, do abstract games have theme? And if so, uh, can you name them? I mean, like stuff like Ingenious or Checkers, are these themed? Because there's some specific ones I, like Santorini that and have I, theme. I, 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 I don't the, I would say the, uh, is the minority. Is no theme a theme? Yeah, it's not, it is a non-theme theme. And yeah. I would say, yes, it is a theme because it, it's, it's its own genre where it doesn't have anything in it. Yeah. But yeah, and this would be kind of similar, but you're trying to go through gateways as a rune. Like, I don't know. Is that the theme? Probably, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the last one over here is there's games that I really, really enjoy, like Russian Rose. I got this from Z-Man not too long ago, and we played through it, and I really had a good time with it. But I feel like it almost lacks theme. <laughs> like, no, the theme it's, is just it's there. It's just trains. Yeah. It could be anything, you know? The, the, the theme is just for color. Yeah. Yeah. But it's crazy because me and uh, the person who taught it to me, Monique, from... Um, Oh, I can't remember the channel, but I'll, I'll link her down below as well. She taught us how to play the game Russian Railroads. Really cool. Really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But just the theme just didn't do it for me. I'm like making trains, I think. I don't know. It was like, you know, it, it could have been really anything. And so uh, I want to know what, what games you guys think would be games that you uh, think are pasted on. Like, well, it's just like it could be, could have been anything. Whereas games like Millennium Blades, there's nothing this was thought like yeah. procedurally. You can't take the car theme out of it. You it's can't. Not, you have it's not to, possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong about this one, too. I don't know. There's a lot of people who really enjoy the theme of this game. It just mm -hmm. it just wasn't for me. Thank you guys for watching. 
And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you guys next, next time. time.